For this course, we were tasked with making a documentary of a company to know more about organizational behavior and get some specific examples of organizational behavior problems within the company. So we decided to interview a representative from BC Transit on the impact the recent COVID-19 situation has had on their workplace. BC Transit is a government-owned organization that coordinates the public transportation in BC. In light of the recent COVID-19 events, operations of BC Transit all across the province have had to change drastically with reduced bus routes, physical distancing, and no fares. We interviewed Laura, who is a recruiter at BC Transit Victoria, and was kind enough to let us interview her. She gave us a unique perspective and some of the organizational problems with BC Transit and the impact that COVID-19 has had on such a large, widely known company as BC Transit. So in Victoria, hiring in Victoria, um, potential employees having different personalities, um, what does your organization do to ensure they hire motivational individuals that are a right fit, uh, having values and morals uh, that align with BC Transit? Um, well, we make sure we put the values and our mission statement, and all those things in our postings. So hopefully candidates will see that and hopefully apply for jobs where they feel like we align with their core values. Um, usually once we get to the final two candidates, we actually bring them in to meet their potential team. We do like coffee, meet and greets, and just try to get to know them and make sure they're going to fit on the team because, um, you, as you probably know, fit can almost be everything like a lot of things are trainable we can train you on a lot of things that maybe you don't have in your wheelhouse but um the fit within a team if you don't have the right fit then the team will start to fall apart and have issues as victoria is highly multicultural how does your company promote multiculturalism inside of the company um i would say that we probably don't do the best job at this um it's something that's one of our uh, in our annual plan and our new strategic goals that something we're trying to get better at. Um, like when we do screen applications, we don't, a lot of times we can do blind screening, so we don't know the person's name. Um, and so that helps us cre create a more diverse applicant pool um, with no unconscious biases affecting anything. Um, but we don't discourage anybody's different like cultures or anything like that. So we try to do, a, like if they want to do an event or um, promote things, that's fine, but I really don't think we do enough. In your experience, have you found diversity among team members to be an asset to performance that is improved innovation, a broader range of ideas? Yeah, I, I think it makes a huge difference because there's so many, um, so many employees that have so much more experience, um, in, we're so like if I've lived here my whole life, so I'm very limited in my knowledge. But when on our team, when we've had people that have worked all over the world and done all different types of roles, it's they have so many, so many ideas that they can throw. So when we do our whiteboarding, brainstorming sessions, I feel like we come up with a ton of great ideas um, when we all come together and like share those ideas. And it's the same thing as like the diversity of the um, cultures and stuff. Is that we do insights personality testing, and so in the same sense, you need that same diverse group of people when you're building a team. You can't have everybody that leads with the same color or the same personality traits. You need a mixture to make a complete team. So having a mixture of personalities and a mixture of um, cultures is like, it's, it's gold. It makes a huge difference, I find. What has been the biggest challenge for a business due to COVID-19? The main one was that we lost about 80% of our riders on our bus. So we had a lot of buses just out on the road empty, but then at the same time, you don't want to not run that bus because the schedules have said that there's going to be a bus coming and there's still essential workers that needed to get to work and people still need to go get groceries and lots of people don't have cars. So um, we couldn't cut service. And then when we did, how do we communicate it in the best way? Because eventually we did have to take some buses off the road only because we didn't have enough drivers to drive them because we had lost about 30 percent of our workforce um, booked off sick um, and then the other biggest thing would be that almost all the office staff works immediately started working from home 
So how does the company deal with budget impact during COVID-19? Well, we are Crown Corporation, so, and the way the funding model works is we get part of our money from like gas tax and those types of things and government funding. Um, some of it comes from municipalities that operate and then the other part comes from fares. So obviously we've had no fares, so that's a huge impact. Um, so we will likely have to maybe not hire as much. Um, we had some expansion plans that we'll likely have to put on hold. Uh, we will likely have to ask for money from the government as well, a little bit extra. Definitely, we're going to have to find some money in the budget and, and, and ask some things that we don't want to. So during COVID-19, are all employee paid as usual? Are there any layoffs? We didn't do any layoffs and all employees were paid completely as normal. And so if the drivers went off, had to be isolated, we still paid them. Um, I think the, believe the only way someone wasn't getting paid was if they decided to leave the country even after the um, government had put the mandate down and then they wouldn't be paid upon their return because they knew before they left that they shouldn't go. So how will BC Transit treat the impact of COVID-19 on um, urban transportation and the future transportation needs? Yeah, I, I definitely will. It's going to impact how we make decisions going forward. I don't imagine until there's a vaccine that anything we are doing would be different. Um, we'll definitely not want the drivers right now if the bus is considered full, um, they'll put that sign up and they will, won't be picking up at stops. So that might impact, maybe we need to put more buses on the road. Um, since we can have less passengers on the buses. So that might impact our model a little bit. Every day they meet, the, the leadership team meets and they have a COVID task force and they're making plans of what return to work looks like for office staff. What does the next phase of driving and routes look like? So they've got the scheduling and planning department and a bunch of different people on this committee. So they meet weekly because things are changing so often. They can't just, we don't want to wait and see, so we're trying to make contingency plans on every scenario that might happen. At last, what era does BC Transit perform well in to achieve successful operation? Are there any areas that could be improved? Um, I think we could have, we definitely need to have more frequency uh, of our routes, like people we have there was going to be an expansion out in Souk because that's the community we hear the most is they don't have a lot of buses and like just even for safety of teenagers and getting them home at night if they've gone into town there's just if they miss the bus the final bus there's no way out to Souk and so trying to work with the smaller communities because it's we have tons of buses in the downtown core because they have a high rate amount of people so it's economically a good idea but we need to look at routes that maybe don't make as much money but for safety of our customers are important um, and I'm not involved in all that part of the business but I know that the planning department works really hard to determine where we can improve our routing and um, our services. Hi my name's Kieran and these are the solutions we have come up with to the problems identified in the interview. The first problem is that the company does not do enough to promote multiculturalism. The solution to this is to promote multiculturalism in the company. A diverse interview panel could be used when hiring to improve fairness and equality. Having a diverse group of people in human resource discussions can make the workplace more welcoming and inclusive. The second problem is that during the pandemic, the company does not have enough information to give employees, especially the drivers, since every day the situation is changing. The solution we have come up with to this problem is that the company should be following the outlines stated by the CDC in response to COVID-19. This can change daily, so it would be important to have an efficient way to contact all employees daily. Some protective measures that can be implemented are fixed windows to separate the bus drivers from the passengers, disinfecting the buses daily, having hand sanitizers dispensers for the passengers, and cleaning all high touch surfaces. In addition, employees that are out in the community, such as bus drivers, should be tested for COVID-19 periodically or if they start to feel sick. 
The third problem is that some routes of public transport still lack frequency, which leads to unsafe travel for people who live in suburbs or going home at night. The solution that we have come up with to this is that using smaller, more fuel efficient buses would bring down the cost of increasing the frequency of the buses on these routes. Thanks.